You've reached the Love and Luck podcast. Hi, you've reached the Best of Luck Bar. To do our part to slow transmission of the novel coronavirus, we are closed until further notice. We recommend checking back with us in a month's time to see how the situation has changed. Sorry for the inconvenience. Please know that we're still with you in spirit. How much we love you never changes, no matter how far apart we may be. Hey, babe. Just updated the bar phone's voicemail message, since I think we forgot to do that when we were updating all our social media and things earlier today. I'm still not tired, so I'm probably going to be up for a little while longer before I come to bed. Sorry, but quarantine doesn't seem to reset my sleep schedule. I know it would be a lot more fun if we could actually spend the whole day together, but hey. Blame my circadian rhythm, or whatever. Anyway, love you. See you tomorrow. Hopefully everything feels less dire then. Okay, so actually, final update before I come to bed. I want it. On the record, the Ricardo cheats at Scrabble by being smart and knowing big words when I don't know anything. And that is offensive to me as a qualified stupid person. So I need you to come up with some kind of like handicap or something I can give him when we have our rematch tomorrow. Something that levels the playing field. I'm counting on you. Hey, honey. Ricardo and I have agreed that for tonight's match, he will only have 30 seconds to play his turn, and you will have as long as you need. Hopefully, that feels about right for you in terms of leveling the playing field. Hey. Hey. Hey, Jason. Hey, wake up. Jason, I'm bored. Jason, did you hear me? I'm bored. I'm bored of waiting for you to wake up. Normally, I have work to do, but I don't know what to do with myself when I don't have work. So, hey, wake up. Entertain me. Can't you bother someone else? Surely other people are awake. Yes, but they're not you. I want to bother you. Why? Because I love you and I want your attention. I mean, fair, but still, though. It's half past eleven, so it's not too much earlier than your usual wake-up time. Yeah, that's okay. I slept pretty well, so I'm not too bothered. This is going a lot better than I expected. I'm actually leaving this as a voicemail for you because I thought this would go a lot funnier. (laughs) Sorry to disappoint you. That's okay. If you're going to come bother me awake, can you at least come down here and kiss me? Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, babe. Couldn't sleep again, so I'm downstairs having some tea. Don't ask what kind. I have no idea. Somehow, in the very short amount of time between choosing the tea, making the tea, and making this call, my brain has just ejected all other information about it. Other than, this is tea that I'm going to drink. It was just from the miscellaneous stash in the kitchen. Some kind of pink wrapper. It's pretty nice. No idea what it is, but it's nice. Uh, Everyone else is in bed. I guess quarantine is giving everyone an excuse to sleep a lot, which is great. And I 
I'm jealous as hell. My body just refuses to do it. It's just like, hey, this isn't normal sleep time. We can only sleep during sleep time. What are you doing? Super annoying. <sighs> Normally, I like this time to myself at night, but it feels a bit less wholesome lately. During the day, it's kind of fine because I've got you and the girls and Ricardo, but at night, when everyone's asleep and it's just my stupid ass still up, it's harder not to think about what's happening. And it's harder to not spiral a little bit, you know? Like, it's not like we haven't been talking about it during the day, but that's fine because we're all together and so it feels not less heavy exactly, but it's okay because there's more people to do the lifting. But at night, I'm fine, by the way. None of this is like anything to worry about. I think it'd be stranger if I wasn't feeling a bit anxious about it all, you know? Like, there is literally a global pandemic happening. Not feeling anxious at all would be super weird. Or a sign that I was in denial about it happening. So, yeah, don't worry. I mean, you can worry about COVID. Like I said, I think that's pretty normal. Just don't worry about me. <sighs> hey, I know we're mostly spending all our time together, so it hasn't been as, like, built into our relationship as usual the last few days, but can you leave me a voicemail tomorrow? I kind of miss them. Like, I know it'll probably be difficult thinking of things to say, but I don't know. I like waking up to your messages. It's, it's normal now, you know? And with everything that's happening, I really want to hold on to normal where I can. Yeah, I, I hope that's okay. Like, I just, it can be anything. I just like having them. I love you. Hey, honey, I love you. Don't feel bad about asking for voicemails. Honestly, I'm kind of glad that you've given me like a concrete action I can do that will make you feel better. I love it when there's a course of action. It's a lot harder to feel helpless when there's something I can do, you know? So here's a voicemail. There's a small group of sparrows out the front that I've been watching through the window this morning. They've been fighting over some scrap of unidentifiable food. It's super cute. I'm always really amazed at how fast sparrows move, you know? It's like they're an animation that's skipping frames or something. One moment they're here, next moment they're there, in the blink of an eye. I guess it's because they're so light? Like, it doesn't take much energy to propel a sparrow very far? <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't guess about physics. I don't know anything about it. Let's see. What else? Oh, Mira's been helping me go through the games on the console. We bought a few new ones to help us avoid boredom for the next little while. We are now finally proud owners of that goose game everyone's been talking about. I haven't played it yet, but it sounds really cute. And I mean, I'm always happy to support local business, as you know, what with us being a local business ourselves. Plus, it's pretty cool that a Melbourne video game is like world famous now, right? That's pretty cool. Um, I was thinking I might bake some bread later today. Usually when I'm baking, I'm making sweets and things for the bar. But 
since we're closed right now, I kind of have the ability to bake whatever I want. And it's been a long time since I made bread at home. I don't even think you've ever had any bread I've made, have you? Huh. Wow, it has been a while. Yep, definitely going to bake some bread today. Maybe I'll get started on that soon, actually, so when you wake up and come downstairs, it will smell all fresh bready. That'd be a nice thing for you to wake up to, I reckon. I'm actually going to get started on that now. I hope this was a long enough message for you. I love you lots, and I'm sorry we haven't been leaving as many messages. We'll make the time for it. Maybe we can do a few more of those ones where it's both of us leaving messages together, like we did for our anniversary. I really liked those. Love you. See you when you get up. Okay, there we go. Voicemail recording away. Wait, is this one on your phone or mine? Calling from my phone, leaving in your voicemail. Okay, cool. I couldn't remember which way we were going first. I mean, I feel like you'd notice if we were using your phone. You know, the phone lying on your chest right now. The phone you've been holding. Okay, sure. When you get all logical about it. (laughs) So, now what? I don't know. Sing me something? (laughs) I'm not a very good singer, babe. It's not about being a good singer. It's about the act of singing to me. Okay, um, what would you like me to sing? What do you know? Honestly, the only thing my brain is conjuring up right now is this fucking folk song I learned back in primary school. Okay, then let's do that. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Okay. One night while droving sheep, my companions lay asleep. There was not a star to illuminate the sky. I was dreaming, I suppose, for my eyes were partly closed when a very strange procession passed me by. First there came a kangaroo with his swag of blankets blue, a dingo ran beside him as a mate. They were traveling mighty fast and they shouted as they passed, we'll have to jog along, it's getting late. Pelican and the crane, they came in from off the plain to amuse the company with a highland fling. The dear old bandicoot played a tune upon his flute, and the native bears sat round them in a ring. The drongo and the crow sang us songs from long ago. The frill neck lizard listened with a smile. And the emu standing near with his claw up to his ear Said funniest thing I've heard for quite a while The frogs from out the swamp where the atmosphere is damp Came bounding in and sat upon the stones They each unrolled their swags and produced from little bags The violin, the banjo and the bones Goanna and the snake and the adder wide awake, the alligator danced the soldier's joy. In the spreading silky yolk, the jackass cracked a joke, and the magpie sang the wild colonial boy. Some brolgas darted out from the tea tree all about, performed a set of lances very well. Then the parrot green and blue gave the orchestra its cue To strike up the old log cabin in the dell I was dreaming, I suppose, of these entertaining shows Never crossed my mind I was asleep Till the boss beneath the cart woke me up with such a start Yelling dreamy, where the hell are all the sheep? (laughs) Thanks. I liked that. I'm glad. Didn't hurt your ears too much? No. It was perfect. Okay, your turn. What do you want me to say? 
Tell me a story about your mum, if it's not too painful. No, it's not painful. Okay, let me think. So, one time, when I was a kid, I was just starting to learn about pollution and, well, we call it climate change now, but back then it was individual things like acid rain and the hole in the ozone layer and stuff like that. And I was getting really upset, like, it's a really hard thing to learn about as a kid. I imagine it's even harder these days. So I came home from school one day and I just burst into tears as soon as Mama asked me how school was that day. And she was really worried. She thought maybe I'd gotten into a fight or gotten into trouble or something like that. And it took me a while to calm down enough to explain that I was scared of the hole in the ozone layer. And I think a lot of parents would have felt the urge to tell me to calm down and not worry, that everything will be fine. And I mean, it's quite possible that she did have that urge. But she didn't do that. She didn't downplay any of my worries. She gave me a big hug, and we sat down, and she made a pot of tea, and we talked about it. We talked about it for a couple of hours, actually. She answered the questions she could answer, and the ones she couldn't, she wrote down so we could go look them up at the library on the weekend. We talked about what we could do ourselves. You know, wear sunscreen, don't use aerosols, that kind of thing. And we talked about how we should encourage other people to do that too. And it wasn't a one-time conversation either. We'd talk about it a lot all throughout my childhood. And she'd organise so we could do things like go plant trees, or we'd go pick up litter, stuff like that, any time I was starting to feel overwhelmed about it. Like, she clearly knew that there wasn't much we could do for those big fears, so she helped me target my worries towards things I could do. It's pretty clear I've always had anxiety problems, you know? Even as a kid. And, I don't know, I think that the way Mama handled it was really good, and I feel like this is a really good example of that. It didn't cure anything, I was still anxious, but... It helped. And it taught me that it was important to talk about things and work on them. It was okay if the anxiety never went away, or even if it got the best of me sometimes. But the important thing was that it was always safe to talk about. I think that's one of the best things she ever did for me. For me, too. Like... I've gotten so much better about talking about my feelings and handling my shit since I've been with you, and I've gotten so much better at it because you've taught me how. You make it easier. You make it okay. I'm glad. Mama would be happy to hear that too. Hey. Can't sleep. Love you a lot, though. Thank you for today. It made me feel a lot better. It's funny how little stuff can have such a big effect on us, huh? I don't know how things are going to go in the coming months, but I feel okay about it knowing I'm with you. I can survive anything as long as I have you, and I know that together and with everyone else we love, we'll get through this. We just have to do our best and take care of each other. It'll be super hard. I mean, not going out at all is super frustrating, and I think things are going to be pretty rough over the next little while, but I have faith in us. Yeah. I think we can do it. I think we can help make everything okay. We just have to do what doctors tell us, Have courage, stay inside, and stay kind. Yeah. I love you so much. I love you more than anything. See you tomorrow. (laughs) 
Love and Luck is written by Aaron Kian and produced by Passive Pez Productions. Kane is voiced by Lee Davis Thalborn. Jason is voiced by Aaron Kian. And the credits for this episode are also read by Aaron Kian, who is me, because I didn't want to make Roz come to my house just to record a few lines during a pandemic. The Goose Game mentioned in this episode is a real game called Untitled Goose Game by Melbourne production team House House. You can get more information and buy the game at goose.game. The folk song that Jason sings in this episode is called The Drover's Dream. We hope you've enjoyed this special bonus episode. We know that love and luck is a comfort to a lot of people, so we hope that this episode helps ease your distress a little bit. Our show is always here for you. We're all in this together. For more information about Love and Luck, check out our website, loveandluckpodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook as Love and Luck Podcast, on Twitter as at Love Luck Podcast, and on Tumblr and Instagram as Love and Luck Podcast, all one word. <laughs>